My first memory. In the park, I'm lying in my buggy, under the high trees. My little knees, east and west, opened to all the opening world. Heaven lies about us in our infancy. We are little scent flares, you said. Tater totter, the seesaw, oh, there was nothing more magical. You see, then you saw. Then the swings, we pumped so hard to get so high, to see across the street, beyond the rooftops, to see all the way to the beach to see the hobos trekking down the tracks, to prepare for our own hobo trek out into the world, to achieve the dream of going over the bar. You'd hear so-and-so had gone over. You'd see the swing mangled around the pole and ponder, did she really go over? Oh, just out. I'm Charles Jordan, Parks Director. Hi, Gail Hawes. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Oh. And I'm Scott, everybody. Oh, really? All right. And you guys came out today to see your parks, right? Yeah. Why is that new video camera? Well, because we knew that you were coming out today, and we want to know whether or not you're proud of your parks. Are you proud of your parks? Yeah. yeah. And you are taking care of your parks? Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know that these are your parks, right? These don't belong to the city. Historically, Portlanders have loved their parks, and I... I don't think I would be going too far out on a limb to say that there are many who feel that uh, we love them to death. Matter of fact, um, it was in 1994 when we came to realize that we had to do something with this most loved park system. And that is when we went to the voters and we uh, shared with them the conditions of the park and what we thought it would be necessary to uh, ensure the survival of this great system. And so we've put together a package for $58.8 million, um, and they uh, approved it. And so we took that $58.8 million, uh, we went out and we repaired uh, this grand old system. Well, here we are uh, approaching the 21st century, um, and we have close to our 10,000 acres of park and some 200 and 
47 sites and we offer recreation programs that are as diverse as the population we serve. Well, we need to do like a, I was just saying, I need a tip sheet. All these kind of finishing techniques, really. Our 345 full-time employees are joined uh, by 1,300 part-time employees plus the thousands of volunteer hours that we receive from the citizens of Portland, all help in making this system what it is today. I can't say enough of volunteers. Portlanders are very demanding, uh, but they are never hesitant to roll up their sleeves and come out and help make good things happen for the system. If we had to buy that service, that would be equivalent to around 230 full-time employees. So you can see the value of volunteers in our system. It's a wonderful system. It enjoys a national reputation, uh, not just the parks, but the programming as well. It is a wonderful Portland tradition to value and care for this system of parks, open space and natural areas and gardens. But we're more than just beautiful places. Through partnerships with many organizations, we can maximize our resources to ensure that every person, especially our young people, has access to recreational opportunities. It is through fun and games that children learn teamwork uh, how to build, you know, self-esteem, and families are strengthened by them coming together and forming, you know, this very strong family bond. Young people are our future, and when they're not playing with us, they're working for us. We are one of the major employers of young people in the city of Portland. We employ somewhere around 800 young people every summer as lifeguards, soccer referees, and in a variety of other jobs. But now, we're going to pause. Uh, we're going through a process called 2020. We're gonna take a look at our park system. We're gonna pause and ask the hard questions. What kind of park system do we want for Portland in the year 2020? What do we want for our children and their children? You know, how are we delivering park and recreation services? Are the citizens being well served? We must ask ourselves all of these hard questions. Are we being good stewards? Are we providing for a system uh, that will provide spaces, not just for you and I who walk on two legs, but are we creating spaces for things that grow, things that crawl, things that creep, swim, and fly? We've got to make sure that we find a place for all of those um, special uh, users of the land. And so, I am optimistic. I am very optimistic that we can do it. I know that the space is here. The challenge for us is to have the will.